Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel with another video today. We're diving into a more somber topic as we take a moment to honor and remember those who have passed away today and in the last few days. Before starting this video, please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for more videos. Stephen Peat Stephen Peat is a retired Canadian ice hockey player known for his time as an enforcer in the NHL. Born on March 10, 1980 in Princeton, British Columbia, Peat's journey to professional hockey started with a strong showing in junior leagues, where he quickly gained a reputation for his tough playing style and willingness to stand up for his teammates. Drafted 32nd overall by the Anaheim Mighty Ducks in the 1998 NHL Draft, Pete's career began to take shape as he honed his skills and developed a physical style that would define his role in the league. Pete made his NHL debut with the Washington Capitals during the 2001-2002 season, quickly making his presence felt on the ice. Known for his physicality, he became a fan favorite for his gritty play and fearlessness in taking on the league's toughest enforcers. Over four seasons with the Capitals, he became one of the team's most recognized players in his role, solidifying his reputation as a dedicated protector on the ice. However, Pete's career was also marked by the physical and mental toll of his role as an enforcer. Numerous injuries and concussions led to lingering health challenges that persisted beyond his hockey career, drawing attention to the effects of fighting in hockey and sparking conversations about player safety and mental health within the sport. After stepping away from professional hockey, Pete's journey became one of resilience as he navigated the challenges that followed his time in the league. His experiences have highlighted the complexities faced by enforcers and the long-term effects of the sport, bringing more awareness to the need for resources and support for former players. Stephen Pete's legacy remains a powerful reminder of the sacrifices and challenges enforcers face in hockey. Though his career was cut short, his impact both on and off the ice continues to resonate within the sport, inspiring ongoing discussions around player health and safety in professional hockey. He died on the 22nd of September 2024 at the age of 44. Marvin Schlachter Marvin Schlachter's life is a blend of perseverance, keen business insight, and an enduring commitment to the industries he transformed. Born into a working-class family in New York City, Marvin grew up in a world far removed from the heights he would later achieve. His early years were marked by the vibrant streets of the Bronx, where he developed a strong work ethic and a sense of grit that would become hallmarks of his character. Marvin's path to success began modestly. After completing his education, he embarked on a career in the business world, navigating the challenges of a highly competitive industry. Initially, he worked in entry-level positions that offered little more than a paycheck, but Marvin approached every task with dedication and an eye for improvement. His determination did not go unnoticed, and he quickly moved up the ranks, eventually landing executive roles where he had the authority to enact his vision. Marvin's influence wasn't limited to pharmaceuticals. He was also an early investor, an advocate for emerging markets, recognizing the potential of industries that were only just beginning to gain traction. His ability to foresee market shifts allowed him to make investments that would pay off handsomely over the years, further cementing his legacy as a forward thinker. Beyond his professional accomplishments, Marvin Schlachter is a deeply respected figure for his philanthropic work. He has been actively involved in charitable initiatives, often supporting causes related to healthcare, education, and community development. His philanthropic contributions are are driven by a belief that success is not just about personal gain, but about giving back and uplifting others. 
Marvin's involvement in these initiatives has had a positive impact on countless lives, both in his local community and beyond. Today, Marvin Schlachter's legacy is one of hard work, innovation, and a commitment to making a difference. His journey from a humble beginning in the Bronx to becoming a respected business leader and philanthropist stands as an inspiration to those who aim to achieve greatness while staying true to their values. Schlachter died from intestinal cancer at a hospital in Manhattan on September 19, 2024, at the age of 90. Jerry Conway Jerry Conway is a celebrated American writer and comic book creator whose work has left a profound mark on the comic industry. Born in Brooklyn, New York on September 10, 1952, Conway grew up during the golden age of comics, finding inspiration in the works of legendary writers and artists. By his teens, he was already dreaming of a career in comics, and by the age of 19, he was writing for Marvel, showcasing both exceptional talent and ambition. Conway is perhaps best known for his influential work on The Amazing Spider-Man, where he created some of the most memorable story arcs, including the groundbreaking The Night Gwen Stacy Died. This storyline was a turning point not only for Spider-Man, but also for comic book storytelling, as it introduced darker, more complex narratives and left readers with an unforgettable moment in comic history. His work also included co-creating iconic characters such as the Vigilante anti-hero, the Punisher, and contributing to the development of other heroes like Firestorm for DC Comics. Conway's unique approach to storytelling, blending action with psychological depth, helped shape Marvel and DC's characters into more complex figures, making him a pioneering force in the field. Beyond his contributions to comics, Conway ventured into television writing and screenwriting, with credits that include writing for shows like Law & Order and Batman, the animated series. His work in TV added to his already diverse storytelling repertoire, allowing him to reach even broader audiences. Today, Jerry Conway's legacy stands as a testament to his creative versatility and influence on modern superhero lore. His creations have left an indelible imprint on the comic world, inspiring generations of writers, artists, and fans alike. He died on March 29, 2024 in Kings Lynn, United States. Renaud White Renaud White's career was marked by collaborations with renowned photographers and fashion houses, positioning him as a fixture in both high fashion and commercial modeling. His distinct style, effortlessly blending sophistication with modern appeal, enabled him to work across varied platforms, from runway shows to magazine editorials. White's versatility and striking presence made him an ideal choice for designers aiming to broaden their reach, and his work helped shape the way black male models were perceived in the fashion world. Beyond his modeling work, White became a vocal advocate for diversity, often speaking about the challenges black models faced in securing high-profile jobs. He used his platform to urge the fashion industry toward inclusivity, creating a ripple effect that influenced casting decisions and representation in advertising. His advocacy laid a foundation that allowed future models of color to access opportunities previously limited by industry biases, establishing White as a key figure in the movement for change. Renaud White's legacy endures not only through his groundbreaking achievements, but also through the impact he left on the fashion industry's approach to diversity. By proving that black male models could succeed at the highest levels, he inspired countless aspiring models and opened doors for a more inclusive industry. His career remains a testament to the power of representation and the lasting importance of breaking down racial barriers in fashion. He died on June 26, 2024 at the age of 80 in Manhattan, New York, United States.
Philip Chapman. Philip Chapman Lesh was an American musician and a founding member of the Grateful Dead, with whom he played bass guitar throughout their 30-year career. His wife's name is Jill Lesh. After the band's disbanding in 1995, Lesh continued the tradition of Grateful Dead family music with side project Phil Lesh and Friends, which paid homage to the Dead's music by playing their repertoire, as well as songs of the members of his own group. Lesh operated a music venue called Terrapin Crossroads. From 2009 to 2014, he performed in Further alongside former Grateful Dead bandmate Bob Ware. He scaled back touring in 2014 but continued to perform concerts. Lesh and his wife Jill administered their charitable organization, the Unbroken Chain Foundation. The couple had two children together, Graham and Brian. Both Graham and Brian followed in their father's musical career. The three frequently played together both publicly and privately, for example in an annual benefit concert grouping known as Philharmonia, dating to 1997 most recently on December 18, 2011, at a Christmas gig including Bob Weir and Jackie Green at the Tenderloin Middle School cafeteria attended by 250 people. Lesh died peacefully on October 25, 2024, at the age of 84. Jack Jones Jack Jones born John Allen Jones on January 14, 1938 in Hollywood, California, is an iconic American singer and actor known for his lush baritone voice and romantic ballads. Coming from a musical family with a father who was a popular big band singer and a mother who was an actress, he developed a love for music early on. Jones began his professional career in the late 1950s, gaining attention with his debut album, This Is Jack Jones, 1962. His smooth style, which blends pop and jazz, quickly garnered a dedicated fan base. He is often associated with the easy listening genre and is celebrated for his ability to convey deep emotion through his songs. Some of his most famous tracks include Wives and Lovers, 1963, which showcased his vocal prowess, and The Love Boat Theme, 1977, a song that became synonymous with the popular television show. Other standout songs include Lady and The Impossible Dream. Throughout his career, Jones has received numerous accolades, including two Grammy Awards for Best Pop Male Vocal Performance and an Emmy Award nomination for his television specials. He also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, recognizing his contributions to music and entertainment. In addition to his music, Jones has appeared in various television shows and films. Notable appearances include guest roles on The Brady Bunch and The Merv Griffin Show, as well as performances in musical theater, such as The King and I and South Pacific. Jones has been married several times and has a daughter, actress, and singer, Jill Jones. He remains active in the music scene, performing in concerts and festivals worldwide. His enduring appeal lies in his ability to connect with audiences through timeless love songs and engaging performances, leaving an indelible mark on the pop and jazz genres. His distinctive voice and style continue to inspire many artists and resonate with generations of fans. He died on the 23rd of October, 2024. Justin Bieber Biography Justin Drew Bieber was born on March 1, 1994 in Stratford, Canada to Patricia Millette and Jeremy Bieber. His mother, Patty, is an author and producer and his father is a carpenter. At the time of his birth, both parents were only 18 years old and were never married, separating shortly after Justin's arrival. During his childhood, Justin lived mainly with his mother in a small Ontario city. Recognizing his musical talent early on, Patty encouraged his passion by enrolling him in local talent contests and sharing videos of his performances on YouTube.
While Patty has not remarried or had any more children, Justin's father has four other kids with his wife, Chelsea Bieber, and his ex-wife, Erin Wagner. Justin's younger siblings are Allie, Jasmine, Jackson, and Bay. Justin's relationship with his father has been quite complex over the years. In a November 2015 interview with Billboard, he mentioned that Jeremy was not in a place where he could raise a kid during Justin's early years. He was immature. He left for about a year when I was around four, going to British Columbia, and returned on Father's Day, Justin recalled. There's a misconception that he's a deadbeat dad, but he has been a part of my life consistently. Jeremy was present during Justin's arrest in January 2014 for driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs. The father and son have matching tattoos that read Yeshua, the Hebrew name for Jesus. In February 2016, Justin told GQ magazine, I'm much closer to my dad than I am to my mom. For a time, Justin had a pretty non-existent relationship with his mother, especially during his turbulent teenage years. I was distant because I felt ashamed. I never wanted my mom to be disappointed in me, and I knew she was. He told Asterisk Billboard Asterisk. We went through a phase of not communicating, so rebuilding that trust takes time. She's living in Hawaii now, which makes it challenging, but things are improving. She's an incredible woman, and I love her. The two managed to reconcile during a vacation in January 2018. Bieber's passion for music showed itself early on. His mother gifted him a drum kit for his second birthday, and he remembers essentially hitting everything within reach. However, it was a little-known talent competition in his hometown, where 12-year-old Bieber secured second place that set him on the path to fame. To showcase his musical abilities to family and friends, Bieber and his mother started uploading videos of him performing covers of songs by Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, and Neo on YouTube in 2007. In just a few months, Justin became an online sensation, quickly amassing a significant fan base. In 2008, music manager Scooter Braun discovered Bieber's YouTube performances and arranged for him to travel to Atlanta, where he met Usher, who swiftly signed the 14-year-old to his record label. To further his music career, Bieber and his mother moved to Atlanta, where he continued his studies with a private tutor. In 2012, he graduated from St. Michael Catholic Secondary School in Stratford, despite having relocated. The following year, he and his mother settled in Los Angeles. At 15, Bieber scored his first hit on the Billboard Hot 100. His song, One Less Lonely Girl, peaked at no 16 on the chart in October 2009, marking a significant milestone for the rising star. The following year, he received a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist. Since then, his music has consistently performed well on the charts. As of August 2024, Bieber has achieved eight no, one hits on the Billboard Hot 100 and has placed 26 songs in the top 10. Baby debuted at Not 5 on the Hot 100 in February 2010, followed by Boyfriend, which reached Nun 2 in April 2012. Three years later, Bieber scored his first no, one single with What Do You Mean? His career reached new heights in 2016 when he won his first Grammy for the collaboration Where Are You Now with Diplo and Skrillex, awarded Best Dance Recording. Bieber continued to enhance his impressive portfolio with his remix of Louis Fonsi's hit Despacito. This collaboration not only earned him a Latin Grammy, but also dominated the charts, securing the note one position for 16 consecutive weeks and setting a record for the longest-running chart-topping song in August 2017. Additionally, the song received nominations for both Song of the Year and Record of the Year at the Grammys. In 2021, he achieved his second Grammy win for the collaboration 10,000 Hours with Dan Shea. In March 2021, Bieber released his latest album, Justice, which features a variety of guest artists. 
The album debuted at the top of the Billboard 200 chart in its first week and received a total of eight Grammy nominations, with the song Peaches, featuring Daniel Caesar and Giveon, accounting for half of those nominations. His single Stay, a collaboration with the Kid Laroi, achieved remarkable success, spending 13 non-consecutive weeks at Nocton 2 on the Hot 100 and winning five Billboard Music Awards awards, including Top Hot 100 Song and Top Collaboration. Justin Bieber first met model Haley Baldwin during a taping of the Today Show in 2009, quickly forming a friendship that sparked dating rumors. After years of speculation, they officially acknowledged their relationship in 2016, but it ended a few months later. Following their split, Bieber and Baldwin lost contact for several years until they rekindled their romance in June 2018. Their engagement was swift, with Bieber proposing during a dinner in the Bahamas that July. They secretly tied the knot at a New York City courthouse in September, after which Haley adopted Bieber as her last name. In September 2019, the couple held a grand wedding ceremony at the Montage Palmetto Bluff in Bluffton, South Carolina, attended by over 150 guests. Years later, in May 2024, they renewed their vows, sharing videos and photos from the event on social media. Haley was visibly pregnant at the time, later revealing she was six months along. In August, Justin announced the birth of their child Jack in an Instagram post.